So today I want to talk all about one of my favourite ever subjects, channeling your soul story. Uh, so this is so vital, so important to me and it feels like it, it needs to happen. Um, it's something that I'm very, very excited about bringing forward uh, and it's the way that I've been working for the past five or six years, uh, all about channeling and bringing soul stories forward, which I think is the next dimension of the way spiritual creatives is going. Uh, a couple of years ago, I set up um, little different spiritual creative support groups. And for me, it feels really important to try and connect uh, spiritual creatives together, uh, especially spiritual writers, because that's uh, a forum I've been working with. Um, and I feel like we need we itching for stories. We're at a time where I think many of us don't really engage that much with what's going on in, in the media or the TV set. And if you're spiritual, there's not films or TV out there so much that is filling you up, that's nourishing the soul, that is bringing this new paradigm forward. And there's a stagnancy in, in what's out there because many of us realise that Things like the media um, and different systems are set up by, basically I call it the ones that win the war. So st stories, um, information, propaganda, mind control, all the ways of being are brought out by those who are in domination, those that have owned countries, uh, people, those right at the top are telling us how to think, how to be, and inevitably that money is filtering down through all the systems and bringing us to a place of stagnancy. Now beyond this lifetime and through our historical roots, we have things like uh, the Library of Alexandria was burnt down with lots of ancient wisdom teachings in it. There was um, monks and people that had this gnosis that were persecuted and destroyed for having sacred texts. There was a huge history of witches and cunning folks and healers who were the wisdom keepers and their knowledge was destroyed with them and with their bodies. It, it goes on and on. I mean, when you look at uh, ancient Egypt and all the unrest and the chaos that happened there and the emerald tablets that were taken by uh, Thoth and resold to a darker agenda, we have a history that keeps wiping out what I call spiritual truth or soul's gnosis of who we really are and what we're really doing here and then we're reprogrammed to believe what they, we are these 3D humans and the problem is with stories is and even I mean I love theatre I love I used to love film and TV and don't get me wrong, there is a movement happening and there are people that are shining a light on uh, reality as they see it and breaking apart the matrix. But for me, my soul's purpose is to do more of this, to activate. I am personally writing a trilogy of spiritual plays and this is my first one, uh, Awaken is about the persecution of witches through my own lived experience of having um, a past life regression and seeing myself being killed as a witch and I had the question why was I killed what what, what was I doing wrong that I deserved to die in a very horrific way I mean witches weren't killed well and I'd see myself hung on a tree and just got the clear audience um, feeling tapped through it was because you were a witch and that seeded the idea for the whole of my first play and then uh, a past life regression that took me into Egypt and I saw the temples being burnt down and I had that question, why were the temples being burnt down? And that answer for both of those questions wasn't something to be found out there in the world, it was something to be found within, in my soul. And then when I realised that it, this was a trilogy of plays coming together, uh, the final one being called Dreams Beget Reality, I realised that we are the master creatrixes of this universe and that we have been harvested and dropped in consciousness throughout the ages and we're reclaiming our dreaming back into being. Um, so that is the, the trajectory of work that I'm on. And going through this 
this process myself was quite a, a lonely awakening because I was in a, a world of theatre, I was in a world of training to be an actor and went into healing because I couldn't understand my multi-dimensional self in these forms. I couldn't understand all the things that were happening to me, these uh, spirits were speaking to me, I was channeling energies, I was working with so much more than the, the 3D paradigm and I didn't know what to do with it and then when I started to write my own play uh, a whole sort of can of worms opened and it, it got deep and big because I was going through a spiritual awakening while this was happening and of course of course I was, to be channeling my soul and writing my own soul story, of course I was going to be broken wide open and to go through the, the realm of all that's there. But honestly, I didn't find this an easy journey because there was like a, a level of understanding of what my soul's been through and what's happened to humanity that I actually found quite hard to deal with. When you're doing any healing work and then you understand the true breadth of what uh, humanity's been through, and it, it's always felt obvious to an empath, a uh, gentle soul like me and many of the people that I work with, the world isn't set up to, to help the human spirit. And why is that? That's not a natural order. I've never felt it's a natural order to, to war and to hate and to... Um, be so divisive. It's never felt natural that there's that's people that are really, really rich and there's people on the streets. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not going into that agenda if you want to own nothing and be happy. I just want to say I know there's a lot of different agendas playing out. I don't believe in a top-down control at all. I believe in community uprising and help serving our our best interests for everyone and having that plethora of opinions and different uh, tastes and knowledge and gnosis because what I found out about the soul is it's very unique. We all have kind of different soul stories and soul histories and soul her stories. We're all very, very unique but that has been, there's been an attempt to program that out of us to have these uh, whitewashed beliefs of like you must believe in this religion and then get rid of all the other teachings or you must believe in this god or you must follow this path and even in spirituality there's like a a certain paradigm that's trying to lead you to certain ways of thinking and i have found especially recently that i've needed to take a step back and go within and then really figure out you know what's going on for me inside and who I am on a soul's perspective. So the reason I became so passionate about channeling your soul story and writing in this way is because I retrained as an actress about seven years ago and had lots of very spiritual experiences happening to me and then I had a dream of writing a play because I was frustrated with what there was out in the world. It originally started with there not being enough juicy, exciting roles for women. Uh, as soon as you hit a middle age, it's like, oh, you could play a mother. Um, and there certainly wasn't any sort of soul-shaking, awakening roles. At first, uh, when I tapped into my witch history, I had this um, desire to, to play a witch. And then when I was looking out there, I couldn't find stories that acknowledged that maybe the, the witch had, had gifts or maybe they were working in a way that was slightly, <coughs> slightly different and magical. I feel like that sneeze brought on the magic. And because I was training as a healer, a shamanic practitioner, an energy healer, I, late, I later trained in more priestess times and I constantly was working to evolve and understand myself spiritually I was bringing that into my writing and into my work and mixing the two and realizing that every time I went off to train in spirituality it was bringing me back to my creativity and opening up my channel and helping me to to bring these soul stories through and then I went down the the lineage of doing past life regression to get all my material and this has sort of opened me up to leading me into writing a trilogy of plays and realizing that 
that this is this is a, a great way for other people to work. Um, so I went through a little. Um, so I had the writer's journey as a bit of a bible for a while, and I think the most important thing on that is uh, the character will because when you're writing spiritual stories or stories based on the soul, you will be going through your own awakening. And I wanted to track my own awakening journey because uh, for many writers out there or people with write a, an idea um, that want to write a book or a play or a story or even venture into their own um, podcast series or YouTube w w telling their own story and bringing their soul's gnosis forward writing blogs, any kind of storyteller, please don't restrict yourself. I had a dream of writing a play um, and I felt that dream was too big because I didn't know how to start. And I kind of wish I'd known that my soul was like, I've got all the story gnosis within you already. So d don't feel like you have to already be writing stories, just have the urge to write something. I mean, I feel like how beautiful it is for us to write down stories at this time and share them with the next generation, share them with our families and bring in this, this new awakening that's happening and help hold people's hands through that about the world that we imagine it can be and also going back in history and recreating what, it, what really happened and bringing some spiritual truths. I am such a big spiritual activist and I feel like soul activations are the way forward and out of this dropped matrix into this new 5D earth we're heading into. So the the I'm going to mark the character journey, uh, the circle, on my own journey and it starts with uh, limited awareness. And this limited awareness for any kind of story, any kind of character, and by the way, when it's your soul story, you always are the lead character, you are the protagonist, even if you're going to end up writing a blurred, fictional and real story, which is what I, the genre that I tend to do, but whatever you are, it's your soul that's wanting to speak, it's your soul that's wanting to bring this truth through. So place yourself centre stage and you will learn and change your life by writing this story. That, that's what's going to happen. So once you're centre stage, the limited awareness I had and the seed that my soul sent me was why was I killed for being a witch, if we take my first play as the example. And I'd had a past life regression and I saw myself being killed as a witch and I basically wanted to know why because it didn't make sense to me why in this past life I was killed so brutally. And then that led me on the path of who witches were. And that brings me into increased awareness which is the next character stage. I wanted to know exactly who witches were and I looked out there in the world and I studied quite a bit about cunning folk which were the healers of the 17th century which was around the period I'd seen my past life and I saw that oh okay there was there was medicine people and they were working with spirit and they were they were doing many of the things that I was doing today because I was also working as a healer so I was like okay I'm working with spirit and it led me to there was like protection practices later that I was learning. I was like, oh, these are the same that they were using back in the day. And this, these cunning folk were very much wiped out with the witches. So it was a really important gnosis to reclaim. You know, they worked with natural herbs and medicine and very much what is happening today, that reawakening of the, the healers, the cunning folk, the witches, knowledge from back in the day. And so... Yeah, when you go on from increased awareness, the next stage on the character wheel is the reluctance to change. And this came up huge for me while I was writing a story about witches because I didn't want to be called a witch. <laughs> so I was like, okay, you can, I was fi finding out all this knowledge, I was awakening to my spiritual gifts, but I didn't want to be called a witch. I wanted to play the character of a witch. So whilst I was starting to write my own story, I wasn't stepping fully into it because I was like, oh yeah, so I'm going to just play this witch and figure things out. But I'm not a witch because to me, witches were ugly. They were haggard. They had sort of evil, dark connotations. And I just didn't want to be one. I thought, I'll just play one. 
and then yeah and then I'm laughing because of how I overcame it so I kind of got pushed to the brink with my soul story basically I was in the reading a very old reading of my first piece of the play and I'd written the sort of 17th century part and I had delved into this world of canting which is this language spoken by the so-called thieves and beggars of London which are basically the working class of London uh, which predates Cockney and I was falling in love with this world and writing this play and it was my first sort of sharing of it which was totally scary the first time you share your work um, it feels horrendous because uh, I was like is anyone going to like this old story why am I writing about this um, but I took the step, shared the work, and right at the end, uh, I had some feedback. And one guy in the audience said to me, what gives you the right to write this story about witches in another century? Like, what do you think that you know about them better than anyone else, basically? And that was my moment of overcoming why I was writing this story. I simply answered, because I was killed as a witch in a past life, and I came back to tell the tale. And that was my first time I'd stepped into ownership of who I was and why I was doing what I was doing. And I came fiercely out of the closet. And that was a moment when it changed the paradigm of my story and made me fully into it, centre stage and like working with spirit going, okay, send me what I really need to say. I was out of the closet. And that leads to the next stage in character journeys and committing to your story, committing owning why you want to do what you want to do and why is it important to you and that opened up a plethora of of stuff and passion and kept me writing because I had to tell this story because I'd gone through this misjustice of being killed as a healer woman which is what I was finding out and discovering from my soul's truth and I needed to speak about it because there were so many people at the time starting to own um, you know, this misjustice for witches and labelling them as so-called witches. And what that meant was there was a lot, a lot of misaccused people being labelled as witches. But then there was also uh, healing folk, cunning folk that were practising this craft, that lost their craft and led into the healers and the spiritual workers today, of which I'm one of them, that haven't, have, have had their craft persecuted and had their gnosis taken and dominated and changed into a culture which moved through enlightenment and science and the medical institution we know today, when actually our practices were different and more organic and nature-based. And I'm not here to tell you what is right or wrong, but I know what's right and wrong for me on a soul level. And reclaiming this witch healer knowledge was really important to me and my soul. So the commitment was to go in twofold. And then we move into the stage of experimenting. And at this point, I was really trying to open up to the world of the witch. I was calling in rituals. I was going to things uh, to spiritual persecution and reclaiming your witch gifts uh, workshops. I was pulling in anything that I could that was spiritually aligned with my play. I was bringing in uh, shamanic drums into the rehearsal room and finding my way into characters, going much deeper on a soul level, using all my healing craft in my acting and writing craft to figure out who, who witches really were by using the methods of witch craft and magic and my healing practice to really open up who this was because what I realized it wasn't going to be found out there in the history books um, of how it was written it was gonna definitely be for me found within the soul to get this story out to get this knowledge out um, and the next stage is preparing and how I prepared is I would read tarot I got a, a witch's tarot I'll show you here and used um, a very themed way to go into my work. I would sort of read the characters that way, set out scenes using the cards, which I, it's all a process I can go into more. Uh, I was using past life regressions, shamanic journeys at home to, to mark out the scenes and to go into deeper into my soul story. Um, and I was channeling. And channeling is kind of a, a big one and why I called 
um, course I'm offering Channel Your Soul Story because one of the things that witches knew well and healers and spiritual folk is how to channel spirit. Now, in our history, there was a lot of laws laid out about whether you could or couldn't do this and whether you were channeling. At one point, it was said that all kind of channeling was channeling the devil. That's what it was in our history, and that's why many people got killed, because they were channeling the devil. Now, I would like to say at this point, having worked in this realm for many, many years and tapping into my soul's truth in it, and also being a healer that works with people to help clear dark energy, demonics, um, shadow paradigms, uh, mind control, entity release, that is part of the work that I do now. So... I absolutely believe demonics exist. I absolutely believe that you can channel them without meaning to. I, be, I think you can channel them with meaning to, with intention. I know that is part of uh, a more satanic witchcraft that people are actually calling in this dark energy. I know that you can get energy attached to you when you're at a lower vibration, when you're struggling in life, or you're dealing with any kind of addictions and then entities come and attach. So. I don't for a minute think that you that channeling is just pure source. I think it is a, a training and an initiation and part of the process I went through, really learning the dimensions of what I was calling in. Uh, and there's there is absolutely trickster falsity energy out there. Um, many people might feel that they're channeling uh, a light being and it actually isn't, or channeling and worshipping. I mean, for me, I've talked about it more recently with the Isis lineage, that um, going from when the temples very much dropped in ancient Egypt, which they did, and it was taken over, and there was this kind of Isis cult that came out of it, and very many satanic practitioners work with Isis in a very dropped consciousness, and they're very open about it when I mean, you can look into the the books that Alistair Crowley wrote and and further into how it's been taken down and dropped that's not to say that anyone that's channeling Isis isn't is working with the the darker side of it but you certainly need to know the full wheel to know what it, energy that you're pulling in and whether it's pure consciousness that you're working with and so I bring that all in because I, I find this so important about really learning about channeling. And with all that said, I, I am a proponent of channeling. I feel that all um, artists that create great work are channeling because you're saying, this is bigger than me, send something through me and help me work with spirit, with source, with all that is. You're saying, I'm going to be an open vessel. So opening up that vessel becomes very important. How do you do that? And that is practices that I'm bringing in on my course and also calling in the right energy and assuring what is the gnosis of knowing what is your trauma and what is something that you've picked up and something you can release and clear. Uh, because it's big when you're working on a soul level. So I just wanted to bring all that in. So this is what I was doing. And then the big change happened um, when... I kind of had a very dark night of the soul when I was writing Awaken, and it's happened again when I was in my second play. Um, so the, with the first one, it was like, I, I, I knew that I was killed as a witch in a past life, but what happened when I was working on the play for so long was the realisation that I really embodied that killing. So I started to feel the trauma being in the body. I kept re-accessing that life through past life progression. And what happens when you do soul work is that you get to a stage where you really um, have explored that trauma and released it because you've embodied it and called the soul light back. And this was happening to me while I was working with it alone and it's why a lot of my healing practice has moved into soul retrievals soul release, soul trauma, soul reclamation work because I don't feel that anyone should be going through that alone. It's a very uh, witch, healer, shamanic practice that's very important that we call our soul light back when we've had any trauma in this lifetime or any others. It's so important that we're soul embodied people on the earth. That is part of the ascension. It's not 
sort of floating around and wanting to live a different existence. It's being soul embodied, activated, earth based people. This is our birthright. And but at the time it was so difficult to me for me to navigate because there wasn't anyone I knew that was doing a, a spiritual story or really knew how to deal with this kind of soul retrieval work that I was going through at the time through writing this story. So I thought, yeah, one of my purposes was to bring a, a community of uh, spiritual writers together to su support that awakening and to know that healing is a massive, huge part of writing your spiritual story. Healing is, is everything because you will be going through this big awakening and healing parts of yourself and you'll need to support that because what, how it will manifest in the external world is a, I don't want to write, I'd rather do something else or you know, it will be coming in your life in different directions because your soul's wanting you to write this story but you're scared and you don't know how to deal with the enormity of it. So yes, that goes on to the stages of consequences, which was the next part of the wheel. And then the next stage in the character journey is rededication. So yeah, around this point in my storytelling process was I had written a whole um, first part of the play in the 17th century, which was really working. And then I was transitioning into writing about an actress who was going through awakening. It was very much my story of what I was going through. A bit meta for theatre. And somehow the story wasn't really working. And it was around this time I got a, a, a support from the Park Theatre in London. And Melly asked me why I was the artistic director of the Script Accelerator project. Why I was really writing this story. And it was another one of those moments that I was like, why? Like, why? And I, although I was out of the witchy closet, I wasn't really out of the spiritual closet, believe it or not, at the time. I was kind of still working as a healer over here, an actress over here, uh, and a writer over here. And I literally said to her, because I'm writing about how past life karma affects another life. And she gave me the wonderful advice and said, okay, that's a great storytelling device. So make that your premise and make that always honour that part. And that bit of uh, wisdom has led me on to the trilogy, always writing about um, past life and current karma and what happens. And it's led me into writing soul stories. It was a, a, a great nugget. So then I changed the whole play into uh, past life and current karma and I got a wonderful another bit of advice from Ellie about, well, what did, um, who was the producer and actress who was supporting um, Awaken alongside uh, Lord Ballard, who who started the project with me, and beautiful soul sisters that nurtured me along the way. And I do really believe in, in community when you've got these big soul stories, it keeps you going. But she said to me, well, if, if you want to bring some sort of justice, what did witches never get? They never had their day in court. And from that moment, uh, the story changed to be uh, in court. And then beyond that, it changed to being uh, um, somebody coming back and caring for the, the man who'd killed her before in this past life and how all that evolves and turns around. And I won't say too much more about the story. Um, and then this kind of, these new ideas, this new commitment to what I was really doing and to spiritual stories led me on a search for how, how you really write supernatural stories, how I bring uh, not only a witch in a past life but a healer into the work today and her practice and what she's doing and the, and the bigger message to the world and the soul activation and everything that I'm really doing. Um, but as I was going through this final attempt of realising what my story was it, and feeling like, okay, my story's going to get out there in the world, the final attempt stage for a character was that theatres all shut down. So my, I felt like my story was ready. Uh, it was on its way to getting produced and programmed and then COVID hit and it shut the story down. And I cried at this stage and felt like giving up I felt like I'd been going through this heroine's journey of trying to get this soul story out of me and I was literally like I give up this is too this is too hard and then the last 
real part of the character arc is mastery. And <laughs> this part is very much saying, show the world your soul. Show the world your soul. I'd been through so much to try and get this out and I ended up getting, uh, sending it out for a bit more feedback and it led me to getting um, supported by Beacon Arts and leading the story back up into Scotland. This support led me to get a dramaturg on board, the lovely Leslie Hart, and this helped me sort of shape my story into what I really wanted to say and also the spiritual truth I'd been trying to turn and write. I'd also been working in writing groups um, with a lovely Saffron and Mike, um, who have a, a wonderful uh, writing group which helps you get to story structure and ways of really getting the story out. So I was working on reframing my story at this time and really, really digging deep into my spiritual why, my soul's voice, and applying writing techniques. So I believe in all of those, but I honestly feel like it's your soul and the healing and the message that you have to keep coming back to. And this is when I ended up having to really channel what the soul's essence of the story was and put it out in the world. And at this point I did do a reading with Beacon Arts and get a script in hand reading of my play. And there was lights and sounds to add the supernatural dimension in. And it was the first time I realized that I'd kind of mastered magical realism in theater. But more than that, I'd created this genre of spiritual realism, which I feel so, so uh, hasn't existed before and is so important. And spiritual realism is about igniting all of those six senses we have as spiritual people, igniting the way that we see the world with spirit standing by our side, igniting that this is a, this is a soul conscious way and we've had to fight for our rights because spiritual persecution is rife throughout the history and still today. And that turned me into a spiritual activist writer. And throughout this process, uh, I learned a lot of different tools um, about how to get these stories out that I feel is so important. And this is why I put a course together, a, a sacred container together um, for eight weeks to help other people nourish their own story and this is for people that have got a seed for an idea this is for people that are writing but not finding the spiritual essence or the soul of their story you might already have uh, written a draft but it's kind of not quite working or you might be not able to put spiritual realism in your work and that's really important to you. Or you might not even think of yourself as a writer, but you've got the pull to tell this soul story. Everybody is totally welcome. It doesn't really matter what stage you're at. It's just you can either redraft your story, you can either add spiritual magic in it, you can either be on the stage where you need to heal because you've been working on your story, or you can just come with a passion and an idea and a curiosity to work with your soul and get this story out of you. So that's it, Welcome Fall. I will say I won't have um, a huge size group because I'd like to work with people uh, more one-to-one -one and keep it slightly more intimate so that we can share space and go through this sort of shamanic journey of creativity together but it's it's really important to help different people have we will start with a lot of energy work to clear your energy to align you with your story to protect your story to create sacred space for your story this is all so important then we will get into um, channeling your soul story writing it and by writing i mean writing the the wrongs and stepping into why you really need to tell this and what your soul is being activated in a very spiritual activist way and then we'll go into a stages of healing that 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 soul story because there will be some deep work around that and we'll talk about how to channel and how to commit to the story in a very 5D way of um, a container, a sacred to container to keep you going forward. So it's going to be an amazing juicy eight weeks. Um, yeah. And that reminded me, because I did write some notes for myself, because there was just so much I wanted to say that I didn't want to forget anything. 
And I think I want to end with the most important thing of why, why now, why this is so important. Because the temples were bent down of the, where the true mysteries were taught. The witches were killed and persecuted. Uh, if you go back into Egyptian lineage, you see that uh, the, the gods and the goddesses have been reprogrammed and taken over. The same as religion has caused so many wars that we're fragmenting and diluting each other when really we are souls having this collective experience. So the paradigm, the world needs to change. We, need, we long for stories to understand who we are. And when I first started this journey as a creative, as an artist, it was because I wanted to understand what it was like to be human. But now I'm at the point where I do my creativity because I want to understand what it is like to be spiritual in a human body. And that is why I do the work that I do whether it's one-to-one, -one, whether it's acting, whether it's writing, whether it's under the umbrella of the theatre that I make, every part of me is searching for the soul essence in everything. And I think that is the most important revolution we have on our hands today. So I welcome anyone in that wants to work in that magical, magical 5D way of healing and transforming art into something brand new into some kind of spiritual realism in your story yay <laughs> okay i will leave that all with you and i will put the link to the course we start in september so yeah you can get in touch with any questions or just jump on board if you feel that it's right for you because it will be a very exciting new venture i'm hoping to go more and more into this work um, in many different ways but yeah, if you're feeling the call, join. And coming up soon should be a free workshop about um, spiritual creativity. Uh, following on, on one I, I run a couple of years ago on shamanic creativity, and I've run it for various different companies. And I feel that many of us want um, some sort of gnosis about how we, how we become more creative in a more flow and open state so that should be coming soon and i will link it in once it's once it's become live all right enjoy